So Dan, you've progressed from apprenticeship now to director. So what drew you into a digital marketing apprenticeship? I think originally probably apprenticeship wise, I was looking for something that could kind of get me into employment straight away. Um, I was toying with the idea of university, but what it being digital marketing, I wanted to get something where I could get that experience early. Um, so I had a little think on it and kind of thought what would be the right path for me. Um, and found kind of the apprenticeship scheme to be handy. Um, obviously it's important that the provider of the, you know, the actual apprenticeship does support you in that role as well. Um, but I figured that would be the right move for this particular industry as well. Um, I tend to think that if you do that in digital marketing as opposed to do university, you get that kind of experience a little bit earlier, really. So, so a lot of hands-on work while, while you learning obviously throughout the job there's a lot of hands-on work as well exactly yeah and i think like you can take that into you know your role as you kind of progress i think that the first three years of obviously me working here were really important for me to start kind of considering what i'd actually do in my role i think if i spent that time at uni i might have got a kind of broader understanding of what digital marketing was but couldn't really apply that to a company's ethos Um, because each company has their own philosophy of things they want to kind of think of and how to implement Um, And for me, you know, staying at this company, you know, throughout the first three years was probably a lot more valuable than it would have been to do university and then kind of join, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was kind of the main reasons for that. So how have you found the journey from apprenticeship to director? I've really enjoyed it. Um, It's not, it's obviously not, not come without its challenges as any kind of journey or any career does. You know, there's been times where it's been a little bit difficult. Um, in terms of you know developing with the company maybe personally or as the company's developed but over time as I've kind of stayed here and learned you know the trade and obviously the company's developed it's all been really really great um, I think in that time there's been a kind of learning lesson for me of kind of understanding maybe not to get too obsessed with failure and kind of think about failure as kind of a learning curve and actually how to develop from that and I think with that mentality and kind of applying that to what we're doing now we've seen a lot more success as a company not just individually but I think as a team, we've all kind of found that that's been important for us. So overall, I think it's been good for me to understand that there's going to be moments that are difficult and there's going to be moments that are better and kind of not kind of uh, take them too seriously either side, just continue to develop, keen to work hard. And, um, you know, as doing that, the whole company kind of helps to improve as well. I think the mentality of you win or you learn is yeah. probably the best way, isn't it? So like with regards to digital marketing, it changes every single day. So what might work today might not work tomorrow. So sometimes the failures aren't failures today, it's just the algorithm's changed as well. So I think the mentality within the office of knowing that, I think that's what makes it good for the whole team to be looking to always, every single day is a school day, so it yeah. works well. Yeah, absolutely. So Dan, how important do you think your employer has been in your own personal development? Yeah, I think that's massive. I think like, especially with any kind of apprenticeship, but particularly with digital marketing, I think having an employer that's willing to uh, train their employees and actually help them to develop within the company is really great. Um, I was fortunate enough to grow into, or to come into a growing company. So a company that was actually looking to improve and grow as kind of, I was looking to do the same thing. So the marriage was kind of there at the start. Um, and as the company started to understand more about digital marketing, I did as well. So. I felt like I could implement certain things and the company was teaching me certain things. I and mean, obviously from a managerial point of view, it's important to have a manager that actually really cared. I think there's a lot of times where people uh, start apprenticeships and they have managers that are kind of selfish or doing it for their own reasons and not really thinking about either the long-term growth of the company, but probably more importantly, the long-term uh, growth of the actual person in the role. So I think both of those things for me were really imperative. Um, and I think really important for anyone looking for an apprenticeship really is to make sure that there's a good marriage between you and what the company uh, actually want as well. I think the important part to that as well is that as you're evolving, you're evolving the processes and the systems as well. Yeah. So it's good from an employer's point of view to have someone who's evolving and developing every single day because SOPs are an evolving SOP. So every single day, like you said, as the algorithms start to change, you need to develop the SOP. So as you're training and developing, the systems are always training and developing as well. So I think it works from both sides. I think that's a great kind of relationship of how it does. But from even to this day, I mean, I still see myself as an apprentice in the trade because things are changing all the time. So yeah. I think it's great that the mentality is there from one, the team are always looking to train each other up, but also then the people who are, who are starting out are looking to train, but also the managers are looking to train as well. Yeah, I think it's that willingness to learn and willingness to change yeah. systems and not be too kind of emotionally invested in the things that may go wrong or may not have worked as you, want, as you wanted them to do. I think there's been certain times in my role, particularly where there's been certain things I've done where I've kind of probably been too emotionally involved in it and looking back you'd prefer to be like right that's not worked I've tried it I've done my best what can I do to maybe implement something that will work better and then obviously the more you have that mentality the more things tend to work anyway so I think yeah across the whole board across the team that's definitely something that's um that's good about our company 100%.
So, Dan, what have you enjoyed about the journey to being a director? I think the thing, honestly, that I've enjoyed the most is just being able to kind of create uh, professional and personal relationships with the people that I work with. Um, I'm lucky enough to be in a team where everyone kind of strives for the same goal. And whilst it's kind of professional, everyone always gets on and kind of is there to support each other, which is really nice. Um, I think being in a team like that is important from not just from a work perspective, but just kind of an atmosphere perspective. I think that's something you've kind of instilled and trickled down to everyone, which is a really great thing to actually be able to do as boss. And then something that I've kind of been motivated by and wanted to kind of do more of as part of the team as well. And I think the more we can all kind of come to that goal of being collectively together is a really good thing for any business. So I'd say honestly, over the over the eight years or so I've been here, that's definitely been the the main thing for me. And then obviously seeing the improvements that we've all made together as a team is really rewarding for myself. So yeah, I think what I like what the most about what you said then is you kept mentioning team, 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 and it is a team effort. Yeah. If people try and do what we've done on their own, there's no chance. There's that many moving parts that you need to have it as a team environment yeah. that can take it on to the next level because. Because people are testing within the algorithms and giving people updates of what they need to be doing. The people that are at the front line doing the work won't have the latest kind of checks in place of what they need to do. Yeah. Plus obviously there's so many moving parts who, who might be good at writing content, might not be good analytically at doing backlinks and stuff like that. So I do, I love the fact that you keep saying it's a team effort because it is, SEO is a team effort. Yeah. So we spoke about what you've enjoyed, but what have you actually found the most difficult on your journey to becoming a director? I'd say probably the most difficult thing I've found in certain periods of my career, it's definitely not been something kind of um, across the whole lifespan of it, certain moments where I've probably been overly emotional about certain things that have happened, where I've maybe not been able to balance off how I've felt about kind of certain things that haven't gone right, whether that's kind of in the business or even sometimes personally, I think there's been moments in my life where I've had times where I've had to kind of you know, look at myself in the mirror and say, look, if things are happening that maybe haven't quite worked out or have worked out well, either way, I need to kind of not be in that extreme and sit somewhere in the middle and try and be a bit more objective. So whilst I'm not regrets, are definitely things that I did find more difficult in my young years and kind of through learning and through experience, I've realized that any kind of business, anything that you're doing, whether you're trying to strive to be better or improve the company or whatever it might be, you need to be able to kind of take things on the chin a little bit and be like, look, I've tried it. It's not quite worked out. Um, it's obviously similar to what I alluded to earlier, but more so kind of uh, maybe being a little bit less, less emotional in certain moments and kind of being a bit more objective about certain things. Yeah, I mean, on that is when you are creating this SOPs, for example, when you've gone and created an in-depth SOP that worked for so long and then we pretty much scrap it and you're like, that's took me months and yeah. months to, to make that SOP and it's like it doesn't work any longer. Yeah. And you're like, you become emotionally attached to that yeah. and it's hard to let go at times and yeah. sometimes you have to let go as it's moving. Yeah. So I can understand some of the frustrations that me and you've spoke about over the years and yeah. sometimes you're like no it, it works and we're like no yeah. it did it, now yeah. it's moved on yeah. and that's where the testing team comes in and says look we've got to call it and yeah. it is difficult at times yeah definitely yeah but i think even with that kind of being able to see that something hasn't worked out as you, as you would have wanted to and be like okay and almost like you said almost detach yourself from it to an extent and be like how can i build a better version of what i've already been trying to do yeah. that's the approach that will kind of get to where your original goal was anyway yeah and you can very easily lose a goal if you get too you know focused yeah, on it's like, like i mean a poker place is knowing when to hold and knowing when to fold yeah. Yeah. and there's times where you might have a good hand that you're playing but if it's not the right hand and you're saying someone's got better you need to know when to fold and yeah. it's important to say this is not working and then yeah. to move on from that so Definitely. So, from being an apprenticeship, how has your role changed to now being a director? It's changed a lot. Obviously, from an apprenticeship kind of standpoint, when you any apprentice is kind of starting in a company, you're learning kind of the ethos and the philosophy of the company and what they're actually doing as a company and kind of the way they operate in certain segments. So, whether in our case it's digital marketing, in another case it might be finance, whatever it might be. You're kind of picking up the you know the trainers you would do at uni really you're learning a new topic and kind of getting it in depth um, i'd say once you come out of the apprenticeship at least for me you kind of you should really have a good understanding of what the company is and what they do as long as they've trained you well so that's kind of when you're finding your feet i think for me personally i had kind of a lot of experience doing off-page stuff and like we just spoke about in the last question kind of there were certain things without that weren't quite working out and as the company was developing and building kind of you know there was elements of things that were happening that weren't quite working the way we were uh, we wanted it to sorry um, and then as kind of that developed, my role changed and the company changed and it all kind of uh, came into place. So I think with that and any being an, any apprentice, if you're looking to stay on a company for a while, you have to realize there's going to be periods of time where um, things are kind of a little bit more difficult than others, especially as a company is growing. Um, and when you're working to kind of develop that, you kind of land in your own role. And now obviously I do a lot more kind of 
uh, content-based stuff. I do help with the promotional videos, like progressive optimization. So, and also training and managing staff in that kind of pocket as well. So that's been the development that I've found really is once I've found my comfort zone in many ways, it's something that I know I'm really good at and that helps the company. It's kind of how can I implement that and you know help other people to understand it at the same level and obviously everyone wins then as part of it. So what would your advice be to someone looking at apprenticeships now or looking maybe to go to university? What advice would you give that person? I think first and foremost, it's obviously ch choosing the right industry. That's the case for anyone really who's looking to do an apprenticeship. It's, it's, the case, it's the same for uni as well. If you're looking to do uni or be an apprentice, you really want to make sure you're doing the right thing for you and making sure that that's kind of what you want to do in the first place. But almost as important as that is making sure your employer kind of cares about you and wants you to kind of succeed and wants you to grow within the company. I think there has to be a, um, a, a long-term goal of what your role could be, even if you don't know exactly what it would be at the time. I think your employer, if they have that long-term goal with you and they want you to improve like that, that's that's the kind of person you want to work for. That's the kind of company you want to work for, someone that really cares. Um, and then understanding that you have to put in the same level of effort yourself. It can't be a one-way street where the company is giving you everything and you're not even attempting to you know, push it forward. If you have that kind of love and care from a company, you need to show it back and show you're ambitious and try your best to learn and be willing to fail. And it's definitely a two-way street in that sense, but. So, so on that, on the question of, let's say, for digital marketing as an example, yeah. Um, is there a reason why you would probably go on the apprenticeship route in digital marketing and university? Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's one of those roles and there's, there's probably not many that are like this, but it's one of those roles where it's so much better to just get on the job and start learning it. And particularly at certain companies, because everyone does it differently. There's certain companies that will be more PPC focused, for example, uh, some that are more kind of, um, you know, just purely SEO focused and organic ranking. And they all do it in different ways. There's all sorts of different techniques that other people are doing and that you're learning from. We know here we work with so many different people who help us to come up with different ideas and vice versa. So I think it's one of those where it's so much better to be within the experts in the industry, learning it on the job, as opposed to learning probably an outdated version of it that uni are kind of pushing of, you know, a generalized version of yeah. digital marketing. I don't think that really can then be that applicable when you go to another company, um, in my opinion. So I think probably much better. To yeah, and I can completely agree. If, if someone wrote the university kind of course today, mm. and it's the most recent up-to-date course that there is, which it won't be, let's say it was, that by the time you've completed it in three years' time, it's three years out of date as a minimum now. That's and that's if it's absolutely up-to-date, where majority of the courses or the majority of online stuff that you learn is years out of date already. So you could be you could be learning stuff that's seven, eight years out of date. Mm -hmm. So in in digital apprenticeships, I genuinely feel like you said you learn on the job. Every single week we're adapting SLPs. So how can you learn something two, three years ago at a university and think that it still applies in exactly. today's market? Yeah. I mean if you look, look at our company three years ago, what the practices that yeah. we were doing they might have worked then, but as the whole thing evolves, you have to move with the times. And yeah. like you said, they're probably teaching the same course really with slight adaptations each yeah. year. So what can you really, what more can you pick up from that as opposed to actually being on the job and learning it? So yeah, yeah as, a, as a, a digital marketing apprentice, I think it's definitely the way to go. So Dan, how important is working within a team been for your growth, would you say? For me personally, massive. I think the thing with kind of the team connotation is it can be quite generalized. I think you have to work in the right team. That's the most important part as opposed to just a team. I think working in a team where everyone's kind of coming together, there's not any egos, everyone wants to help each other out on their own projects and their own things. That's the kind of team that obviously we work in here and the one that kind of I'd want to work in anyway. Um, sometimes working in a team can be detrimental. I think if you work in a team where there is that and there's kind of conflicts and that kind of thing, and a conflict of interest even that it can really affect the whole you know way that the company develops so i think for me personally it's been amazing but i think for anyone else that's working in a team it's understanding that almost team growth is just as impersonal uh, as important it's sometimes more important than personal growth i think as a team grows everyone finds their own pockets and are willing to teach each other different things and um yeah for me it's been massive in that sense but obviously like i said it's being you know in, a, in the correct team for you that's that's important yeah i definitely agree i think the the whole team mentality is making certain that right from the bottom all the way to the top if if there is that kind of mentality or you almost flatten it as being we're all in it together yeah. we're all mucking in together we're all trying to help each other out because people have personal problems that sometimes they bring into the work and sometimes you need to help them out to get through that which then evolves the whole business and stuff like that so the whole mindset of teamwork is teamwork makes the dream work as they say so yeah, yeah. it's um yeah it's very important i feel yeah So, 
along the journey, what not new challenges now are you bringing to the table with regards to the directorship? I think probably now my biggest challenge, or at least something that's kind of newer to me, is kind of making sure that the systems and processes that I actually am implementing are kind of as clear as possible for other staff. Um, obviously, as we're kind of expanding as a company, we're bringing in new staff. It's really important that their systems are clearer than mine, for example, and not saying mine weren't clear, but if you can keep improving that along the way and then they teach people in a clearer way, then everything just kind of grows in that manner. Um, I think having new staff that have joined with us, kind of um, being exposed to brand new things and quite a heavy topic, really, of digital marketing, where there's a lot that we're doing, it's yeah. important that that's simplified as much as possible and that the systems are very kind of step by step so they can work through everything that's all really clear and that there's no real gaps in kind of what we're doing and everything's kind of, uh, you know, watertight, really. Um, that's yeah. probably the biggest thing for me in terms of a challenge because I think a lot of the stuff that I'm doing personally is is building to kind of get to that level and then once you're actually putting that out to other staff it's making sure that you're happy enough with how clear the, the uh, processes are for them to implement. Yeah definitely I mean it's, it's the whole theme if revisited type of model of being system dependent instead of people dependent so probably is the most important part of a business you almost make it franchisable so as you're building one site and you're going to the next site it's you've got them systems in place you know in from buying the domain, to hosting the domain, to the building of the site, or if it's an existing site, doing the technical SEO side of things, doing the content briefs, doing the content, the internal linking, the backlinks, everything all around, the images, the videos, uh, social media, every single part of it, we've got a system in place to know how to make it the best it can be in the lowest amount of time as well, because time obviously costs money for the business, so yeah. the systems are the most important part. So. It struggles for everyone in making certain we're refining those systems as much as we can. Yeah. Is there anything you wish you could tell your former self during your career path? I don't think I'd take anything back in the sense that I think all the growth was there for a reason and I'm really happy to not sound too cliche, but you know, I'm happy <laughs> with how things have gone and everything. But in terms of what I would probably do to kind of tell myself something that would probably improve kind of my growth and stuff, it would probably be to, you know, not kind of ride the highs and lows too high. So if something does work, not think I'm on top of the world with it. And if something doesn't, think I've wasted all this time, I'm useless, yeah. etc. And kind of understand that process more. I think that being quite an emotional person, it was being able to balance that out and almost make myself more objective and still kind of be in touch with my, my, my emotions and work anyway. Um, in terms of the work that I'm doing and kind of what, in, what kind of impact that does have. Um, so I think that's probably it really, is making sure that if I was younger, I'd probably say to myself, look, like, this has happened, it's not quite worked out, or this has happened, it has worked out, but let's move on to the next thing, let's move on to the next thing, it's going to yeah. improve things and not sit and dwell on things so much. I think that may be... I think also in digital marketing is that if you did try and sell your, your former self something five years ago, what you might have done five years ago worked at that present time. Yeah. So what you tell them now might not have worked back then anyway. Yeah. So in digital marketing, it's, I mean, sometimes in other industries, it's easy for you to turn around and say, I wish I'd told myself X, Y, and Z, and I'd known that earlier. Yeah. Where in digital marketing, it's hard because it does evolve, it does change. Yeah. Um, it, it's probably a, a, a daft question to ask in the digital marketing industry, because like you said, you need to always, always be able to evolve. And I think that's where we probably should put an end to the interview because the, the whole ethos and mentality of every day is a school day and us always looking to look forward and improve on what we're doing. We always need to keep that mentality, even today. Yeah. So even though you are a director now, if you still have the mindset of, I'm in the trenches looking to learn, it, yeah. and all the rest of the staff are in the trenches looking to learn day in, day out, that's where we're always going to continue to be ahead of the game. Yeah, completely agree. It's, it's uh, being able to bounce back is that's why we're at the position we're at now and why we'll still have a lot of room to improve as well. We it's never finished, is it? We always have to keep going and keep improving, and yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah, cool. Speaking, yeah, decent. Yeah, back to it. Cheers. <laughs>